Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, we're gonna be finally covering the second half of the Game of Thrones stab effect. I totally left you guys hanging, I'm sorry about that. The reason it's taken so long to finally get this out is because I've actually had a lot of really cool opportunities come up in my life, both professionally and personally, that I'm really excited about, that have kinda, you know, taken my uh, attention elsewhere, but I'm working on getting back on track. I got a lot of cool plans for future tutorials and things to show you guys, and I can't wait to show you what I've been up to for the past few months, but that's for another time. The other reason it's taken so long is because, to be completely honest, there's not that much left of this tutorial, and it's all stuff I've touched on before in a previous tutorial, the Wolverine Claws one. So because of that, I'm going to format this one a little bit differently and I'm going to actually take you back through my original project file and show you all the steps that went into finishing this up rather than recreating them for you to follow along. So because of that, if any of you guys have any further questions about finishing up this effect and uh, this tutorial doesn't quite cover it, please leave me a comment or reach out to me on Twitter. But with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, get right into it. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects. As you can see, I have my original project imported and uh, I have everything soloed. So that way what you're seeing in the composition right here is what you should have been left with if you were following the previous tutorial. So the next step obviously would be to add back in the sword blade. And that's actually a fairly simple process, which if you want more detail about, like I mentioned just a minute ago, go check out the Wolverine Claws tutorial. That one covers it a lot better than I'm going to here. But I have a single still frame from this piece of footage set as the environment background to help transfer the color data from the area we shot in onto the sort of diffused metal of the blade. So then I'm going to click on my element 3D layer here and I'll actually solo it so you can see what it looks like in the project and go to the scene setup and I'll go ahead and hide the environment so you can see the model better and uh, also if you hit G while in element you can hide the grid uh, and that helps you just get a better view as well sometimes if you if you don't need it, but as you can see, I just have the sword model that I created to match my actual sword prop. And again, if you're following along with my footage, you have this model in the download, which will be linked below, or it was included with the first download that you got from part one. And I'm just using a clean metal Pro Shaders 2 material. And uh, again, the environment is set to my still frame from the footage. And then what I've done is I've taken the group that the model is in and created a null under here, group one, group utilities, and I created a null. And I actually have that up here named as hilt move. And this is actually parented to the tracking data that we created in part one that follows this actor's body, the same piece of tracking data that the arm is actually attached to. So that way, once I've oriented the sword, it then will line up perfectly with the hand. But then of course your sword will just be sitting on top of your actor's body, which you don't want, which is why I have this mat created down here called body mat. And I'll solo that just so you can see what it looks like. I uh, just drew a rough mask around the shape of my actor's torso, parented it to that same knoll that everything is controlled from that has that actor's movement, then added a rough and edges effect just so the edges weren't so clean. And if you scrub through, you can see it matches the uh, movement. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just telling element 3D right here, I'll toggle switches so you can see, that I want it to only show wherever this black solid isn't with a alpha inverted mat. And after you've done that, you're left with a sword that is going through your actor's body. But now we need to cover the blood. There are a lot of different layers all working together to create the desired blood effect. The first one I'll show you is this comp I have open here called blood spread. So essentially all this is is just a red solid with a, a crude mask animated to move outward. And then I have a turbulent displace along with a rough and edges to get this desired edge effect. And then I have it set to luma mat for a fractal noise layer on top. And that just helps give it a little bit extra grungy detail. So you can see what that looks like if I shut it off. Definitely a lot better with it on. So I've taken this blood spread comp back into my main stab comp. Then I've parented it to that same knoll that follows this actor's movement, oriented up, put it underneath the sword. So that way, here I'll uh, solo it and play it back for you guys. It essentially just slowly spreads out and works its way onto the actor's clothing. 
Another thing you can do is play around with the transfer modes. As you can see, I have this one set to darken, which after testing a few, I decided this one was uh, best for what I was going for. The next blood element I want to show you is this one that was actually uh, an idea given to me by my friend Josiah who uh, said there should be some blood running down the sword, so I went outside, filmed some on my own, and uh, keyed it out and put it in the download folder. So again, you should have this if you downloaded the project files for part one. If not, it's gonna be a link in the description below if you want it now. But I uh, took it and again, parented it to that same null that controls everything else with this actor's movement, and uh, then helped it match the scene with a few effects. As you can see, I've got some Hue and saturation, brightness contrast, and a little bit of a blur on there. You can see what it looks like without those. Um, I decided that looked like it matched uh, almost perfect. We're definitely sitting at about 99%, but I wanted to bring it that extra 100%. It's all about the, uh, the details. I mean, you can't really see the difference, but trust me, a little bit of extra work goes a long way. And yeah, with that one, that's pretty much all I did is I just uh, dropped it on, made it match the footage as best as I could. Because the way this one was filmed, if you're working on my footage, it should already line up with the sword angle and drip down properly. Now the final big blood element there was to add to this scene is the blood that obviously would be on the edge of the sword after going through this man's body. And uh, the way I did that was actually a lazy shortcut that I use sometimes that I'll uh, show you guys. If you go ahead and grab your main comp here, so my main stab, and I just duplicated it in the project panel, so that's control D, and then I went in here and I just soloed the element 3D layer. And uh, that way, this entire comp, all it consists of is just element 3D. And you know for a fact that this sword layer will line up perfectly with this sword layer inside the original because uh, it's an exact duplicate. So back when I was working on this, what I did was duplicate it just as I showed you here. And then uh, I went ahead and I gave a white solid to the background and then I created a simple blood texture, which you could find one online or make one with fractal noise like I did here. And I overlaid it onto the sword itself. So then I could take this blood sword comp, which I named it, back over into the main comp. And because of the way I set it up with just duplicating the comps, I knew for a fact that it was already going to line up perfectly. And then I created a mask just around the tip because I didn't want the entire sword to be covered in blood because that wouldn't make too much sense. And then I set the layer to multiply. So that would get rid of all of the white and have just this blood texture overlay onto the sword. And with that, you're pretty much done with this effect. Like I said, there wasn't too much left in order to finish this up. So I'm just gonna quickly run you through some of the extra steps I took to make this look just a little bit nicer. So as you can see, I took this entire composition and brought it into a new clean, fresh comp just to add a couple more details. As you can see, I put some Action Essentials blood just at the moment the sword punctures through just to make that look a little bit more gruesome. And then I also went ahead and took this same blood layer right here I showed you earlier, and I stole some of these drips coming off of the bottom and I uh, masked them out and added them to the end of the sword. They're very subtle, but you can see that after the sword pokes through, it starts dripping a little bit of the excess blood off. Again, that's just from this same stock footage layer. And I went ahead and I did the exact same thing to my actor's mouth. As you can see, a little bit of blood starts coming out of his mouth towards the end here and dripping down and uh, it's pretty gross. And then of course, I just threw a letterbox on the whole thing, and then uh, after some color grading, you have a finished shot. All right, and with that, we can pretty much call part two of this tutorial finished. And uh, I honestly feel bad calling it a tutorial because it was more of just maybe a walkthrough of how to finish up this effect for those of you guys who I totally left hanging there. So if there was anything maybe I forgot to cover or you just wanted to see me go over, feel free to leave me a comment or reach out on Twitter. I'd be happy to help any one of you guys with your projects. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm definitely working on getting back on track, which means more content, more motion graphics and visual effects tutorials for you guys. So don't forget to uh, like this video if you learned something and consider subscribing.